This one took a while, viewer. I've had a long and difficult relationship with Mortal Kombat. Without going into too much detail, not long after I got into it, I was told not to play it anymore by my mother due to its excessive violence. What do you want? I was that young, impressionable age, still firmly within the spectrum of children that won't somebody please think of? So, much more than Street Fighter, it had become a taboo that I only really experienced secretly at my dad's house until I was in my late teens. I saw a few episodes of the cartoon show, somehow watched both movies, I'm thinking on USA long after their release, but honestly I can't remember at this point, and sort of stayed aware of the game as a cultural phenomenon, but it was frequently out of my reach. Never mind that Mortal Kombat 4 was kind of shit, while still being a place that dumped a lot of MK lore, fans of the series really seem to mark out for to this day that breezes me by. However, I have kept up with the series since Deadly Alliance in some form or another. And as some kind of full circle moment, my mom purchased Mortal Kombat 10 for me a few years ago for Christmas. With Injustice 2 being a monumental success and most certainly behind us in the development sense, it's time to look forward. My prognosticating in various stages of making violent profiles has been rather accurate, with the revival of Arika fighting and potentially Eternal Champions in 2017, so let's see if I can't wrangle some favorites of mine into the next installment of Mortal Kombat that NetherRealm Studios is undeniably working on as I write this very text. Now there are nine installments of the Mortal Kombat franchise if you don't count MK vs. DC, and I don't. And as most of you watching this video know, some characters are more notable by their absence than their inclusion at this point. So I'm omitting anyone who's made six or more appearances from my pool of potential returning characters. For the record, that means I won't be asking for Jax, Kung Lao, Johnny Cage, Kano, Baraka, Melina, Katana, Reptile, Sonya Blade, Liu Kang, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, or Raven. That's like asking for Mario in a Mario game. I'm also only drawing from characters portrayed in the main series games, and of course ignoring guest characters like Kratos and Jason Voorhees. And being dead or revenanted or whatever else can happen to you in the Mortal Kombat universe isn't going to stop me from making a request. We're also keeping it to 10 fighters. The original Mortal Kombat had 7 to follow my esoteric Street Fighter list, but that doesn't seem like enough, and none of the numbers in between are of any real significance to the franchise. Ken makes better lists anyhow. I've gabbed on enough. Let's check out 10 fighters I'd like to see in the next. Number 10. Smoke. Despite being a prominent character to the franchise, Smoke gets a low spot on this list because I want him for super shallow reasons. I love his moves. I was super psyched to get a version of his 2011 fighting style with Triborg in MK10, and if the way I have to get him is through Triborg, I'm okay with that. It's seriously just all about the moves. Hell, Triborg would probably be better story-wise. You know what? Fuck it. Go back. Round 2. Number 10. Triborg. Yeah, there we go. Cool backstory for Triborg that they didn't get to explore in story mode. Sort of the Ultron of the MK universe who wants to wipe out humanity and become the master of the Lin Kuei cyborgs. That's pretty dang cool, and I don't know about you, but I play Mortal Kombat to do cool shit. Plus, if they do fighting styles again, or a variant of Injustice 2's gear system, we can still have Cyrax, Sector, and Cyber Sub-Zero in our hands. Who knows, maybe even more characters. It'd be great, especially for fan favorites who might not have a place in the story. Cyber Kano, Cyber Jax, Cyber Raiden! Triborg assimilates Raiden and is now infused with the power of a god of lightning, making him the surprise BBEG. BAM! Fund it! Someone get me Ed Boon on the horn! Number 9, Curtis Stryker. This is less a personal interest and more of a disappointment about wasted effort. While his debut in Mortal Kombat 3 was less than enticing, rocking that deranged pizza delivery boy style and generally a bland personality, Stryker returned in 2011's Mortal Kombat with a revamped look, attitude, and fighting style. And it worked! I felt like this game took Stryker in every right direction, and was honestly surprised when he wasn't on roster in MK10 regardless of the timeline's significant advance. Besides, if Jax and Sonya can still kick ass, so can Stryker! Give old Curtis a chance to shine! Ah! Not like that! My eyes! My eyes! Number 8, Serena. I have a soft spot for girls named Serena, from the American version of Sailor Moon to the female member of the Straight Edge Society and uh, uh, other Serenas I can't think of right now. And Serena from Mortal Kombat is no exception. I'm a sucker for the bad guy turns good storylines in general, and with her making an appearance in Mortal Kombat 10, it seems like it might be something of a tease for future installments. We can hope, anyhow, right? In any case, I could go for someone who uses sick pink fire. See Goth Annie's visual upgrade in League of Legends for how crazy people will go for Pretty Pyro. 
Her comma could also be integrated more strongly with her fighting style, giving us some very cool new fast-paced attacks and combos. Good in range, good in melee, she could be the next Mortal Kombat's version of Deadshot. Wait, no, 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 don't, don't do that. The internet doesn't like it when you do that. Number 7, Lee May. While she might not be the most incredible character personality-wise, I was always a huge fan of Lee May's fighting style in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance and Deception. I suppose we could do that gag again where I go back and make number 7 on this list Baji Kwan or something, but why separate the character from the fighting style unnecessarily? She's the only character in the series who uses her styles from Deadly Alliance, after all. They're kind of intrinsically linked. And again, we have her in Mortal Kombat 10, so... Foreshadowing, maybe? Number 6, Noob Saibot. Now, before y'all try to educate me on how many games Bihan has been playable in, I am talking about the Noob Saibot persona specifically. Smoke and Noob are probably my favorite ninja in the series, and I think that's kind of strange that after Weapon Ninja in the first Mortal Kombat, our next idea was Ice Ninja, and then Acid Monster Ninja. Cool concepts to be sure, and I live by the mentality of thinking outside the box as often as I can, he says while in the middle of a top 10 list video on the internet fully recognizing the irony. But Noob and Smoke's techniques of smoke and shadow are so tied to the idea of the ninja that it surprises me that they didn't come along until later. And then eventually they became one character. Trust me, I was jazzed about that. But after the break in Mortal Kombat 10, I'm ready for more Noob. Which is pretty much the only reason in the context of video games anyone would ever ask for more Noob. Number 5, Devora. Hands down, my favorite addition to the Mortal Kombat roster in 10, Devora is the insect equivalent to Starscream, of questionable morals and constantly ready to betray her superiors for greater power. Everything from her character design to her moveset and the sweet way she cradles that bug baby, Devora sold me almost immediately. It helps that her fighting style is exactly my jam, and there's just something oddly satisfying about wrecking someone with my Oba positives. That probably says some super bad stuff about me, huh? Well, too late now, it's going on the internet with the rest of my nonsense. Number four, Rain. Is it because I've loved Prince's music since I first saw him on The Muppet Show years ago? My fondness for the color purple? An appreciation of a really good joke? A deep interest in Adenian lore? Well, <laughs> it's, it is not the last one. I do like oddball characters, or those with an odd origin story, though especially when they're not just useless jokes. But one of my favorite things about Mortal Kombat's history is how they brought characters like Ermac and Rain to life after wild fan theories grew legs and rabid support. And damn it, he just hasn't been in enough games. I think there are interesting things you could do with his powers, too, above and beyond what they offered in 2011. And he's yet another MK10 tease. This game spent so much time flirting with me, I swear. MK10 be thirsty. Number 3, Nitara. Now, quite against the grain is Nitara, who hasn't been seen since Armageddon and didn't even make her debut until Deadly Alliance. Further exploring the Mortal Kombat definition of a vampire, a moveset that makes better use of those sweet wings and giving her more of a rock and roll style to some gag lines in addition to actual character development, would make her a really iconic, interesting person within the franchise instead of the footnote she is now. While I think her character design could use a bit of a makeover to produce something less, uh a product of its time, and a lot of work on her personality all around, I think Natara's basic concepts are a gold mine, and could be refitted to become an impressive addition to Mortal Kombat 11. Number 2, Havoc. Another character with great design potential who didn't see much play due to the Armageddon. Another character who's been established in the current timeline, although exclusively in the Mortal Kombat 10 comic series. Further complications from the fact that the story is self-contained and Havoc is indeed quite dead in said comic, but when the hell has death ever stopped anyone from being in a Mortal Kombat game? A Chaos Priest who can break his body in unnatural ways to execute attacks is just complex enough to make a visually and creatively compelling concept that doesn't go too far as to fail the elevator pitch. Hell, Havoc could have brought himself back from the grave somehow, and he's now looking to gather power once more. Not the big bad, but another threat the heroes of the story will need to stop, lest he succeed in reigniting his reign of terror. This might also be an excuse for a visual overhaul to give us something a little less He-Man and a little more horrific modular life form. 
creepy. All right, before we get to number one, I do want to shout out a few that just missed the list. Ermac has been in the game a lot, but his design and concept is unique for a fighting game, and he occupies his gameplay space so well that it's kind of pointless to replace him, even though he's not quite as reliable in the games as Sub-Zero or Raiden. Nightwolf is a little boring now, but consider what if he got possessed by the Rutu entity from the Challenge Tower in 2011. Exploring Chameleon, or Chameleon, either one, both, whatever, that could afford some new wrinkles of the story without expressly adding new characters. The entire cast of characters in Mortal Kombat 10 deserves recognition as well. I might not be a huge fan of Jackie Briggs and Cassie Cage, for example, but they could fill the shoes of their forebears pretty easily by the next installment without us feeling like we've lost key characters to the franchise. And finally, Mavado. No, no, uh, Cabal. Uh, Mavado. Uh, you know what? Hook Swords. Give somebody hook swords because they're cool, and what did I say earlier? I play Mortal Kombat to do cool shit. Now then, on to the final entry. Number one, Hornbuckle. Ah, did you guess it? I did my best to foreshadow for you guys. For those of you who weren't there back in the day, and don't scour fandom wikis as a form of recreation, Hornbuckle is the unofficial name given to Green Liu Kang here from Mortal Kombat 2. In the same vein as Ermac, Rain, and Blaze, I'd love to see this character finally realized as a full-fledged member of the Mortal Kombat roster. He already had an appearance in Shaolin Monks, it's time to establish him in this timeline. Best of all, with so little information already in place about him in either continuity, he has all the potential of a brand new character while still getting that fan pop of seeing someone with a warm place in our hearts finally get a roster spot, like Tremor and Scarlet before him. Now, if we start getting teasers for the next Mortal Kombat game, and any of these characters are in it, you know my powers of foresight are far stronger than mortal men ever believed. In the meantime, recent developments have caused me to switch up my video schedule to bump a short-lived franchise up to coincide a little more closely with a certain set of guest characters that recently crawled their way out of the sewers, giving us a lot of reason to shout, Booyakasha! Or, you know, if you're a fan like me from way back, Cowabunga! Light out.